What's good, everybody? How we doing today? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka the Long Wolf, and we are grateful for another day. This is another episode of Sake Sundays. Proud to be sponsored by Sake Hot. Go ahead and check them out. See how you can get yours delivered to your door. This all natural, vegan, vegetarian sake that was actually brewed in Kyoto, Japan. So if you want to have something all the way from Japan right here in your home in America, go ahead and check them out. And then also a special thank you to God's Favorite Jewels for providing this for our guests. Oh, uh, thank you. The little Black Onyx. And that brings us to our guest. Tell the people who you are, who we got with us. What's up, y'all? I go by Sajal. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's all she got to say. So go by Sajal, and that's all she got to say. So, Sajal, tell us about yourself. What, what do you do? Uh, well, I make music. I write poetry. I started off originally, like, you know, when it comes to music, I started off originally writing poetry. That was the first thing. Um, I'm originally from Compton, California. I have Bohemian roots. I was raised in a family full of, like, cooks for the most part. So it's like, you know, I'm a creative. It was cooks and athletes. I play softball and stuff for a second. But But yeah, I play softball and stuff for a second. So I was trying to be athletic, but it didn't work out. So, you know, end up just getting on to theater and music. So that's really what I do. It's just poetry, write music, trying to record myself now. I'm trying to learn, you know, not the best yet, but I'm getting better. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. That's all I do. All right, let's, let's take a shot. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so you just told us you're a singer, you're an artist, you make music, you write poetry. Um, when did you start? Which one? Like poetry? Either. Both? Well, I started writing poetry when I was probably about like eight years old, and that's probably around the time where I wrote my first song, too. What prompted you to write a poem? Um, if I can recall, I was upset with, like, one of my parents and stuff, and I went in there, I wanted to put my, like, kind of put my anger into words in a certain type you of way. You said you were eight, and you decided you were going to do that? Yes, I was, I was, it started off with basically me talking shit, like, in the poem. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was talking shit, I started, like, writing, I was writing cuss words and stuff like that, because I used to write it down, because, you know, you'll get upset, you can't say it to them or anything like that, so I would go in there, I'll start writing shit. Gotta do it. I started writing all types of stuff, and then I ended up writing, and then just end up becoming a poem. I don't know how, but yeah, I mean, I just started writing a bunch of poetry, and I kept going every single time I felt a certain type of way. No matter if it was at school, anything like that, I start writing poetry. And you know, sometimes I think it was rap, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was definitely poetry a lot of the time. So writing has always been a way for you to like release. Yeah, to vent for the most part. Yeah, that's how I get my feelings out. I even write little notes and stuff like that, like throughout the day. If I'm feeling a certain type of way, I'll write it. And just to write it down, just to see what bothers me and why it bothered me, I'll go look back at it and ask myself, well, why did that bother you today? And how many times did it bother you? Look back inside the book and see, well, this bothers you a little bit too much. You're like, you need to stop. <laughs> That's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. But... I never thought about looking at something that I wrote like on purpose to think about what I was thinking about. Yeah. Like there's been times where I flip through an old notebook or something and I'm like, oh yeah. And I remember or I feel that way again. But I've never gone through like, let me see what I was talking about and how I was feeling. <laughs> like that's interesting to even start with. I'd probably look at every page different. Is usually yeah, like, like, let me see what was I talking about? Was it hard? <laughs> Is there anything worth like pulling out of the desk not to just self-regulate like that's interesting yeah, so, yeah i gotta look back at it gotta do that for myself gotta do the self-reflection two snaps for self-reflection let's take a shot to that <laughs> that was way more than two snaps but you know we're gonna take a shot to that too. Oh, two-handed snaps for self-reflection <laughs> mm. that was so good nice that and chill that was really good i got my lipstick all over the things you know Good, those two are yours. Don't use any of the other. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just playing. But yeah, we do have these two. Here, let's do a quick little taste test. Okay. This is my first time trying one of the recipes. So they have recipes for different cocktails and drinks on their website. And I went ahead and mixed one up today. It's just a little mule. Mm. Let's see how it's hitting. 
It's good. It's very good. That's nice. <laughs> Ginger beer is so subtle. You got me smacking on it. <laughs> it's so subtle. <laughs> and the lime, like, is perfect. Try it. Just try it. Check it out. Yeah, it's most definitely. Drink sake good. high. That's all you need to know. Drink sake <laughs> high. But, okay, uh, more about you. So, you said you did theater. What was your favorite theater experience? Um, I would have to say when I have played. In the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Is that a play or just it's a play. Like, okay. It's okay. a play. It's a play. So Putnam's not where you were at. No. Okay. We was, I was out there in Palmdale. <laughs> 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 it was a real place. <laughs> and it was just, it was my favorite because it's like, I that's when I used to do a different type of singing. I used to kind of like be belting and stuff like that with it for the most part. So it's like the school that I was at, they always kind of like tried to make me do like the type of like songs and stuff like that, whatever you had to belt. And you had to do all this type of stuff. And it's like, I didn't want it. I wanted to be a completely different character, but they ended up making me the male character who was the black character. And it was Mitch, but they changed, like, they changed the name. And so with that, whatever. So it's like Coach Mitch. They made that like my last name pretty much. But, they, you know. I'm just calling you Miss Mitch. They just, because I was a coach. So you still had to say coach. But like for certain, like the lines and stuff like that in the play, you had to be the coach. So it was fun, though. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> oh, do you see yourself doing more theater in your future? Um, probably so. I mean, I had watched the color purple the other day and it's like, you know, just with it being a musical, I did a couple of musicals when I did do theater and it kind of like inspired me to kind of want to do it again. Not necessarily the musical, but just <laughs> just theater in general. It kind of inspired me to want to do that again. So musicals are a whole other beast. They are a whole other beast. A whole other beast, especially if there's dances. Yes, it's yes. Like, no, you got to sing, and even if you're not the lead or like solo singing, you still might have to learn the dance. Exactly. Or sing the backup. Right. Like, bro, I didn't even audition for any of the parts that sing. <laughs> You, you're part of the singing anyway. <laughs> exactly, right. exactly. The show must go on. It got to. It got to all the time. Oh, as a performer, what's been your like craziest crowd experience or like audience interaction? Can it be like a like a personal one, like when it came to like people who I knew? Anything, yeah. Um, I would say that my crazy experience had to be like my first performance singing. Which it was actually, well, it wasn't necessarily my first performance singing, but it was my first performance singing my own music. Yeah. And that was just last year. And my mom and, like, my auntie, my best friend at the time, and stuff like that, whatever, like, and a couple of my other friends came. My brother and his girlfriend came. And I think it was just the funniest interaction was just the fact that they were all kind of, like, in the front for the most part. And it's like, when I was performing, of course, you know, your family's going to be supportive, but they're drunk. They... <laughs> And then drunk, and it's like literally what are, so one of the people who I guess was kind of like running the show they had to tell my mom it was like can you just you know quiet down just a little bit it was like we just want to hear her sing you know there was like you guys are louder than her sing because my mom was just like what they the furthest going and saying and but it kind of hyped me up a little bit more but most definitely she was louder they were louder than the song so other people were like they were trying to vibe and stuff too but it was like if you could see pictures and stuff of it they was all kind of looking at my mom and looking at my auntie like uh, i wish they would shut that up <laughs> <laughs> looking back to you wish you had said like yo mom like i love you guys like and said something to, like chill them out i mean look yeah i wish I, but that was my first time seeing no, like, for I, was sure, so, yeah. I, was, I was up there like this like when i was i was like it was a recital i was like were you nervous like, i was nervous. outside of them yes i was super i'm always nervous so it's like i was super nervous at that time when i was it was my first performance and it was my own song but i was just kind of like so you think there's just trying to break you out the show yeah for the most part i think they were trying to be you know supportive so and it helped. It helped. I started getting more comfortable. But then, yeah. With it. Let me sing louder so people don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it together. Because, Lord, Jesus. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, uh, did the overall performance go well? Then? Yeah, it went well. It went well. For my first performance, I think I did pretty good. Everybody told me I did really good and stuff. I don't know if it, you know, they was just saying that. But, you know, a lot of people right. didn't tell me that I did yeah. really good. So... And when I look back at it, I feel like I did a good job. So it's just like, you know, I have my good ones and my bad ones after that. So it's just all trash. What was the song? It was Proposition. 
Okay, so it's one of the sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was proposition. People can go listen to it and shout it out. Yes, it's proposition. It's out on SoundCloud. So, you know, it's going to be out on other platforms soon. Um, like I said, I'm just kind of like starting to get up with this whole thing. So at the end of the day, I'm super like, it's so funny because when it came to the writing and the music and all that, it's like, you know, I could, that's easy. Writing it, you know, trying to record it, putting a sound together. But now having to go through like, the other stuff that it takes to be the artist yeah no like i'm just i'm just getting used to that so you know it's gonna take so it's on soundcloud proposition sajal soundcloud lex telling on this is on there too i have a freestyle on there called stuck on scene that was actually the first song that i have recorded so i was definitely gonna listen to that one as well and i love soundcloud like i said for right now for right now i'm getting it together i'm mm-hmm. getting it together we actually got a song that's dropping in what two days? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got to drop it in two days, so that's something to add to the discography. Most definitely, yes. That's you know that's gonna be the more legit one. <laughs> that's gonna be multiple places. <laughs> oh, as someone who's seen your creative process, kind of, tell us about like how you create when you feel like you're in your best. What what's the mood? Um, usually I be chilling, like, for the most part, whatever, like, I start writing or if I want to freestyle and stuff, I be kind of chilling, like, in my own space. And it's, like, I have to be kind of, like, isolated away from because I have a very chaotic life for the most part. So I got to kind of be in my own isolation. And I'll just play a beat, play a beat, probably smoking a blunt, you know, probably having a drink. And I'll play a beat and then I'll just get into a vibe, start humming out and start catching vibes simply by hum, like simply by just kind of like trying to catch the tone of the beat, yeah, to find the melody. And I'll do that forever. Like, I'll do that for so long. It's been times with people who I work with, they'll be kind of looking at me like, you gonna do some words? (laughs) I think even he one time was just kind of like, okay, well, I want to put some words on this because I'm not coming. Yeah, you talked about the last time? Yes. I wasn't tired of anything. It's just I had a a spark, like words came to me. He's like, I got words. Like, I got words right now. Like, they just came to me. It wasn't, I wasn't tired of the whole minute. It's just like, ooh, I like that. I got words for it. But no, it's just like, it takes me a long time though. So it's like, I be understanding because it takes me a long time to kind of just catch it. And by the time I do catch it, though, the words come kind of quick for the most part. So that's really just the process. It's just the vibing out, the humming. So would you like to be alone, though, for the most part? Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. That's when I really get into it. That's why it's like even when it comes to me trying to teach myself how to record right now and everything. It's just like I've been just in my zone. I put my little beats on and shit like that. Like, you know, put the like pull the beats up. Go on there and just record some stuff that sounds wild. But at the same token, it's like, it's kind of like, I'm like, okay, well, you this is what you did wrong on this. It's like, I'll try and error. So I feel like I'm learning, you know? Well, no, I feel like that's a beautiful thing, though, to be able to just go in and just, like, have fun and just see what you come up with. Mm-hmm. Because it's where you get to, like, stretch yourself and, like, stretch what you already have as an idea or a limit on what it is you can do. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, let's see what happens. And then just from doing that, you could get another idea and be sparked on a whole exactly. another path. Oh. And then having the power to record yourself is just like, whenever you have that yeah, thought, it's like, exactly. all right, let's go do it. Like, you don't have to wait. Because sometimes, like, when you're recording yourself, like, voice memos and stuff, yeah, you have so much off oh, because you want to get that sound. And then you record it and you're like, it doesn't feel the same. Yep. And so it's like, if you could do it yourself, it's like, man, I'll do it right now while I'm feeling it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, That's the bliss. That's the bliss. Right? And it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> it's super fun. That's the thing. I was like, oh, this, this is actually not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. It is. But the same token, it's like, it's super fun. But like, even trying to just figure out, like, finding something new each time I try to do something is cool to me. So, and I did the telephone effect too on one of them. So I was like, I, I remember it. <laughs> Oh, what's been your like favorite thing so far as either an artist or a performer? I think my favorite thing is people coming up to me like after I get done performing and telling me like how good I did or how like the song possibly made them feel. I think that's my favorite thing. If like how the song made them feel, whatever song that I perform, like they be like, "Well, that gave me chills," or this thing, this did this for me, or this made me think about this. I feel like that's like my favorite part because I feel like that's what I'm really doing it for to begin with, yeah. is to make people feel. And at the end of the day, it's like if I'm not 
making them feel that I'm not going to really feel much either. I have to get the vibes from everybody and see if it's the right people. Because sometimes it's just like your music just doesn't fit the right people. So it's just kind of like if I'm giving and reaching out to at least that one right person who is just kind of like, you know, yeah, I actually, I like that. I fucked with that or whatever. That's what makes me feel super good. I could go home and brag to my mom and be like, yeah, somebody said, you know, they sister, then this happened. And then, you know, they fucked with it. Cause and it's like, that makes me feel real good to be able to tell her. Right, baby, that's good job. <laughs> uh, it does always feel good to not only have people say like, Good job, but to say I connected with that right. or like I felt that is like you're like, all right, cool. Exactly. It's like anybody can say I liked it. But if you tell me it's because of something personal, that's how you know you felt it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who's an artist who does that for you? I would say an artist who does that for me would be probably like Sade. Sade makes me feel a lot. Phyllis Hyman. I listen to Phyllis Hyman. That it's a song by her that is um called "I Can't Stand Living All Alone," and um just to know about Phyllis Hyman and know about her story and how tragic it is that like towards the end it's just kind of like and her voice how beautiful was how beautiful of a woman she was I just feel like that song specifically I have a lot of people could really connect with and that was one of my favorite ones and it's like Sade I connect with her a lot too because it's like her song um, like a tattoo. Her song, uh, Pearls. <laughs> it's not that one, y'all. <laughs> song is that? I don't know. Just like a, I know so you talking about. I always hey. No, that's not. No. That's not the Sade version. It's a slapper. <laughs> you hate you like I was saying. And then Pearls, and then also it's a song that she has. I think it's called Baby Father. That's a song that I really love. So, yeah, those are like Maybe my top two. Color. Yes. Why? Because you should, I don't know why it's called that. It's just like, but it's a good song. It's not like, it doesn't sound, it's not about what it sounds like. It literally, she literally what goes, about? Yo, daddy knows your flame. It's about like a father loving his daughter and love and love like blossoming between a man and a woman starting from childhood. It's, it's about a lot. I guess I just got to add it to the car. I guess you just got to listen to it. Put me on. Put me on. So we're here for the learning breath. Leading on to a great question. <laughs> What's been the biggest thing you feel like you've learned or had to, or like are learning as an artist? Um, I feel like it's uh, really how not to be stiff and stuff like that for the most part. I'm trying to learn how not to be so like nervous. And really how to engage with, especially when it comes to performing, how to engage with the crowd and how to really try to feed with them. Because I would go up there and I would just be like, da, 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 da. like for the most part, and I would stand in the same place sometimes. And sometimes, you know, I'll get to moving and stuff like that, whatever, because it's like I'm trying to teach myself how to engage. And I feel like the more that I've been performing, the more that I do perform, I'm starting to get that more down pat. So it's like, you know, it's. Like I said, it's just trial and error. It takes time because I'm a nervous ass motherfucker. I mean, I'm anxious. I feel like, I don't know I need to do this shit anymore. I think no, I'm too old. like that. It, it'd be bad sometimes. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. Okay. I'm already on stage. I'm already now. on stage. They're looking at me. If I, I run mean, off, this is going to be a model. I'm going to be on stage like, I could just leave right now. I don't know what I do. Just back up, talking wow. into the mic. And they be looking at me like, you going to leave? <laughs> I hear you though. It is like, like you said, you're always nervous. I feel like, at least for me personally, I'm usually nervous. I won't say I'm always nervous anymore. And the only times I'm not is because like, it's a performance that I'm like, oh, okay, like something last minute where it's not like I planned for this. Like, but, okay. so yeah, so it's like someone said, oh, you're here. Do you want to do a song really quick? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. With those, I'm not nervous because I don't. I wasn't even expected to do this. Right, I was true. like, but. Outside of those, if I'm planning for something and I want to have a good set and I pick these <laughs> songs and they're, yeah, no, 100%, still nervous. But at the same time, it's like, it lets you know you're doing something that's like pushing you, you feel me? That's true. And it's not even always nervous to perform. Sometimes it's more of like, how are they going to receive it? How are they going to receive it? That's, that's what it is for me, yeah. I, uh, oh, I don't know. I feel like the nervousness is fun because once you get into it, if you could lead into the nervous without thinking, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, 
you realize this shit fuck, bro. Yeah, like, I'm not even that this no more. Like, you start kind of like you start seeing how they're like picking up on it, and it's like they start giving you feedback and stuff while you're going. I feel like it kind of just it starts feeling like the nervousness kind of turns into like a fuel, like kind of just starts pumping you up in a way. So oh, yeah, yeah. There was something that I don't remember if I would read it or I was listening to it. I feel like I read it. This was back before the age of content. Like I feel like I was in high school, and it was like if you're doing something like in a performance aspect or like stage aspect, I think it might've been with acting. It's like if you're about to have a performance or go on and you don't have any type of nerve, anxiety, not like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen, but you're not ready for it, then you probably shouldn't be doing this performance or show because you're not as tied to it. Like right. you're not, you don't, you don't have an attachment to how it comes out. So you're not actually in it. Yeah. And so it's like the moment you do lose that little, oh, I hope that this is, is like maybe you should evaluate why you're even doing it. <laughs> right. Is your heart still here? <laughs> like, like, you even still want to do this. So like, is this what you want to do? Yeah. It's like if you could step up, with like, whatever. Is, do you don't care? Like, no. Yeah. It's like, so, but not performing. It's definitely, definitely a beast. What's your favorite song to perform? I would say my favorite song to perform is Lex Talionis. That's, that's like my favorite one. I feel like because it's like that's my favorite song that I ever written. That's my favorite song that I ever recorded. And it's like a lot of people like Proposition. A lot of people like stuck on scene and stuff. But it's like like Sally Owens is like the song that I wrote for me. I feel like it's some songs that we want people to feel. We want people to relate to. And then some songs it's kind of like I don't care if you do or if you don't. This song was written specifically for myself. This is something I had to get out for me. So when I hear it back and when I do perform it and I see people kind of just zone into it and feel it and they kind of seem like they feel a little bit of what I was feeling when I even had to write it. I love it. And I, that's the, but that song was the one that gets me that response all the time. So it's like, I like to be able to have an exchange I still of love energy. It. No. Oh. Hey, that's called Hater Love It. The Lex Sally on this one is the pussy nigga. I can see you coming back. So I'm going to give you a rest that he is that one. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's most definitely my favorite one. You was talking about somebody? I was talking about the devil, actually. I was waking up at 3 a.m. every single night. And low-key, I still do. I still wake up, but it's like 4 now. So it's like, it's not too bad. But it's like, I was waking up at 3 a.m. every single night. I was going through a lot of stuff. Having a lot of bad thoughts around that time. So it's just kind of like, I felt like I was being spiritually fucked with. So it's like, I wrote the song kind of like as a, a fuck you and like a battle. Like for like my spirit when it came to like the devil trying to fuck with it. I feel like sometimes we be in an environment and spaces and around people who aren't really like spiritually in tune, probably because they have their ignorance to it or also probably just because they don't fuck with it. And usually those are the ones who really don't, you don't really want to be around for the most part. In my opinion, it's the ones who don't fuck with it at all. They're just like, I don't fuck with that spiritual shit. I don't give a fuck, da, da, da. And they still do a lot of things that seem dark. So it's just kind of like, that's what I was around a lot. And I was okay in it all the time. And I was waking up at 3 a.m. stuff. I was just around a lot of like, what do you mean? What? Well, you said people who claim they don't mess with like spiritual stuff, but they still do things that are dark. I'm saying like, if you say that you are like an atheist and stuff like that, right, right, you don't believe in anything, but then you can still say like, oh, F the church and you can still do type of like rituals and things like that, whatever, like just do shit just because, just because you don't believe in it, but you're still doing certain things that seem a dark certain way. I can't fuck with it. That's what I'm saying. It was, I was around shit that just wasn't cool. I don't know how to really put it into words, <laughs> but that's the shit that, that's the reason why I wrote the songs because I was around a lot of stuff that just seemed like it was just spiritually fucked up. So I had to get it off of me. <laughs> I hope we started prayer in them lyrics. Of course, of course, of course. That was the whole point. Yep. Oh, you just brought up uh, the spirituality a little bit. Oh, uh, what do you consider your spirituality? What do you mean? What I consider? Like, what do I believe in? Or what do you mean? Well, you said some people are atheists. Some people do. Whatever. Well, I believe in a higher power. I believe in the Most High. You know, I believe in. Yahweh, at the end of the day, I believe in a God. Um, but I just don't have a certain type of like religion that leads me. I just most definitely just believe that there's a higher power out there. I don't think that we're just 
out here alone and we ain't got nobody to pray to and nobody to believe in. And you feel me? Like, I just don't believe that because of the things that I've survived, the things that I've been through and the prayers that I said before surviving and the prayers that I said before going through these things. Like, we ask for stuff and then we get certain things and we think that it's different. We think that it's bad. We think that it's there because of if you're asking for strength and you get a situation that makes you have to kind of be strong and makes you have to kind of grasp into that. You kind of have to go through something where it makes you buff up and most of love is like, you're getting exactly what you asked for. You're like, it's like stuff like that. That's kind of how I see it. So having to go through so many situations like that, that made me most definitely believe that there's a higher power for sure. So that's why I'm at with it, but I'm not about to just be up in the church every single Sunday. That's not me. However, I still do go whenever my mom asks me to go for the first Sundays, because we have to go and we have to wear stuff. <laughs> we have to wear like fatigues and stuff because you know they say we're coming to coming for war. For Jesus, fatigues. What? Why do you have to wear fatigues? Because we're coming to war for Jesus. That's what they say. What kind of church is this? That's why I said I don't really go as often. Just the first Sunday when my mom makes me. Been <laughs> to a lot of churches. I've been in church a lot. We ain't never had to come in fatigue every time. <laughs> Yeah. Fatigues. Is there a drill sergeant? No. He went, he no way. This awful word. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. He said you're coming to war for Jesus. So, I don't know. Uh, some people. They make us dress up in the fatigues. Who is they? <laughs> 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 the church the cadets the <laughs> church. Oh. who was they the church oh, I, feel I heard you say Yahweh though yeah oh where'd you get that I got it from my family obviously I just, that's where we grew up calling God for those who to say Yah Yahweh Jah the Jah was like the first one but then it's like my mom she always was like yeah Yahweh 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 so it's like that's Kind of what led me to just be able to just, you know, to just this is what you hear. So that's what LinkedIn, that's just our word for. I just asked because, like, I grew up heavy in the church and I didn't hear the word Yahweh until I was in my 20s. I guess I'm in my 20s now, but uh, I was 10 when I was literally reading the Bible myself. Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Like, super long, 10 years old. And how old he is now, that was long. I'm trying to age me. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> Look, but no, it's been over 15 years, so I I was like at least 22, 23 by the time I heard the word Yahweh, and like I still didn't know where it came from. And so like Yahweh is the Hebrew word for uh, the understanding of, like you were saying, God, and it's just one of the words for encompassing. Yeah. It was interesting to me when I found that out, and it's like... Uh, the person who was talking about the word was like Yahweh, and it's like how it sounds like our breath. Like mm -hmm. I, if you were just to exhale, you know, <laughs> God breathes the breath of life into men. So it's yes. like Yahweh. But then somebody else was saying Yahweh, like your way, like Yahweh. And then you said Jah as well. And so I heard somebody say Yahweh as in Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting the different interpretations of stuff and then the actual origins of where they came from and yeah it is it is mm -hmm. i'm good i'm good drink to jesus why is yours keep sticking why shit is magnetic you know that's that energy baby you know at the end of the day, magnetic. <laughs> and you know, actually, that's what my name means. I think it's I think it's Spanish. It means iman means magnet, magnetic. What does Charles mean in Spanish? Uh, Carlos, Carlitos. I know that's what it is, but what's it mean? I don't know. Uh, I'll go by Charlemagne anyway. French. Charlemagne. Not that nigga. <laughs> he got his name from somebody else. See, he, he got his name from somebody else. We talk about the OG, the original. You feel me? <laughs> okay. Nah, I was just playing. If like we gonna say it in another language, but it was uh when I was in middle school, my social studies teacher was like, "Yeah, Charlemagne," and I was just like, "Sure." 
It was studying that <laughs> empire. And, uh, I was, I was like, I don't, I don't say I liked history because it was boring to me, but it was the easiest class because all the answers was given to us. I have done. You feel me? Like literally, <laughs> social studies class was literally like, here's an A. As long as you came to class and you took notes or you listened, like one of the two, because you're talking about all the answers the whole class. And so like, I fucked with the class because all I had to do was either listen or do my homework and I'd have all the answers so I didn't have to do anything unless I listened or did my homework. <laughs> and so he just rocked with me because I it was eye to eye. Where were we at? Charles Page 135. The Ottoman Empire. I don't know. Like, like right page. And I'm going to zone out because I know what page to read when I go home later today. 185. <laughs> so one day he just came up to me he was like, I'll call you Charlotte. Hey, great. Yeah, I'll tell you, Gene, what's good? I, I'm going to take French next semester. You know what? <laughs> Did you ever take a foreign language? Um, I took Spanish. Did you ever write in Spanish? Write in Spanish? Like your songs? No. No. There you go. There's a challenge for you. I mean, I could. I, I watch some stuff up. I know some Spanish songs. Yeah. You know, I listen to a lot of Ivan Conejo. I don't know who he is. Okay, we'll learn. All right. All right. I'm not going to make a promise. I've heard a song or two, but I don't know them. Uh, I don't want to promise you I'm going to. I don't want to lie. I'll listen, but I don't want to promise I'll learn anything. Uh, I've kind of given up on myself in learning foreign languages. Well, that's lazy as hell, because then it takes only, like, what, six months? Google Translate? You could do some shit through Google Translate. You could. I wrote a song with some Spanish in it. Chilling with my amigos. <laughs> no, I'm lying. Like, are you for real? I'm for real, but uh, there's more. There's more. <laughs> what else did you say? Primero dinero. Pesos. Numero uno. Why you say it like why you say it like really? Number one. You gotta listen. Number one. He said pesos. That's how I said the song. Pesos. Pesos. Number one. I really can't stand this. Okay. Oh my God, say you gotta say it. You feel me? Like I can't stand it. Like I can't stand it. Yeah. Oh. I gotta do some French stuff. I actually took more French than Spanish. I took enough French. There are people I took classes with who literally went and lived in France fluid. Okay, how do you say you're beautiful in, in French? Uh, don't matter. Je. Je? Je? I have no clue. No clue. Je. That's I. Je Bella. Je Bella? Je Bella. Okay. Isn't that Bella? Isn't Bella beautiful in French? Or is that Italian? Oh, Belle, Belle, yeah, Belle is beautiful. You right? Is it Belle? Si. In your Spanish. <laughs> I told you the language thing ain't for me. It's we. It's we. Is it we? Yes, <laughs> French is we. I know that much. Yes. But you. Uh... <laughs> uh. We make music, not languages. Uh, that's true. Um, what's been your favorite in studio experience? I would have to say my favorite in studio experience had to be when I was working with the homie Chris, and it wasn't in a studio; it was in like my mom's living room, and then he just brought his equipment and shit, and then we just linked up. And then also, it was when um, I recorded like Italianos, and that's when it's like. I don't really know, like, I'm not really, like, not what it, I won't say I don't really know, but I guess I'm not fully comfortable with doing ad-libs like that. So when it comes to, like, layering and all that type of stuff, it's like, you know, I never really do that with my songs. And when I recorded Lex Talionis, it's just kind of like when I was out there, I was out there with this, um, my friend Thrash, I was out there with my friend um, Lizzie and them, and it's like we were all in the studio, and it was just kind of like, they were just play the beat, they was playing the beat, and then like they was kind of looking at me like, get on it, do your shit, and then I was just humming. I was doing little hums and stuff like that in the background, but they were recording everything. Like, every time I would hum, anything like that, whatever, they'd be recording it, like, the whole entire time, and then they just kind of mixed all that shit together, 
And then they kind of make it like Sally Old Downs kind of look at them like, this is where they was like, this is where I live is. <laughs> Cause we out there in the South, like I was out there for school. So I was in Alabama and they was just like, yeah, like this is what Adley's and you saw me, you don't know how to do the Adley's. She, that's Adley's. So next time people can do a song to the Adley's. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's a, like, um, a good, I don't, know, I don't know what I'm looking, how I'm, I don't know what's going on right now. I just had a whole, I feel like part of, what helps with that, like this whole understanding, is a good engineer. Yeah, it's like the first time you get in there. Sometimes you just excited, like, yeah. Especially if you go to the studio, studio, you be like, whatever you say, do. It like do I don't know how. Even if you made a song, you like I ain't never do it the right way because I ain't never been here. Like is what you're thinking. <laughs> so it's like the person who is engineering or is like showing you or recording you. It helps so much if they're able to say like. This is what you should do. Right. Or like, this is what this is called. And I just saw ASAP Rocky say on this clip I posted, and he was just saying, um, uh, uh, he was saying that he learned that a great project and a great product, a finished product, 90% of it is the editing, is what makes it great. Only 10% of it is the actual building of it and the gathering the materials. The other is fine. The other ninety percent is the edit and how you put it, how you put it together and piece it together. I think we can use another. Thing. Sake, 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 sake. Oh. Uh, they're doing, you know, doing my shoulders. That girl. What keeps you inspired as an artist? I would say my life. Just in general. I mean, I'm not about to go all deep. But I'm just saying the things that I've been through, the things that I continue to go through, the things that I, like I said, survive. This is kind of the kind of what keeps me pushing, keeps me when I'm writing. Because it's like, whatever I think about it, it's just like, I I would want to write something down because I would want to write like a thought down when it comes to me thinking about anything, referencing my life. And then the thought would turn into words that start to rhyme. And the next thing you know, it just starts turning into a song. So I think that's really what keeps me inspired. It's just my life and then just my family. Let's see. If there's one... No. Who's one artist? I give you two. Who's one artist that you would work with? Just living. Living artist that you would love to work with. Sade. All right. And then if you work with any artist, dead. Nipsey. Nipsey? Nipsey. Okay. I feel like I would have made something completely prolific. Do you feel like that's prolific. because you're from Cali you chose him? No, it's just because I just actually really love Nipsey. Like, since Nipsey came out, like, when he was just, like, even, like, like a little skinny nigga who was still, like, active. And she, like, thought whatever, like, we just was fucking with his music. He was just always have been hard to me. And it's, like, the shit that he has said. And knowing, like who my homeboys is and stuff like that where I know the people who I lost and shut that how they were and how some of them were talented the same type of way and seeing somebody do what Nip did it's just like it's just dope I would have loved to have worked with him that's just like 100% I would have loved to work with him and then oddly also a uh, Prince it, it's like I would have made a song to fit Prince. Like, I would have made something that I knew for a fact Prince was going to fuck with. Like, because I could change my sound a lot. Like I said, I changed my sound a long time ago when it came to me belting and stuff like that, whatever, and kind of like growing up singing in the church and stuff like that, whatever, and then just completely just saying, like, I'm done with all that. Like, I'm just I'm just going to chill and I'm going to this song. <laughs> and he would be looking at me like, why'd you change? It's just like, I just, I feel like you could do that. And, you know, it's fun to do that. So I was definitely going to work with Prince, too, because I liked him. I liked his attitude. I liked how he was. It's like, he was super cool. His interviews and stuff, I would watch this shit all day. And Earl Sweatshirt. That's so random, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like Prince is the oddball, actually, to, like, say <laughs> Dipsy and Earl Sweatshirt and Prince. Mm -hmm. I can't lie. Earl is hard. Earl is one of my favorite rappers, low-key. Earl is so hard. Yeah, I just say low-key because it's like... It's so unexpected even for me as like a favorite rapper. You feel me? It's like right. I've always loved Jay Z, like little Yeah, Wayne. right. Yeah. And then Earl Sweatshirt crept up on the list when I was like twenty. 
and it's the flow. Facts. The flow is too gully. He's like insane. you don't know what word he might use next, and I, don't know, I just love the unpredictability. The unpredictability, the, uh, the unpredictability is uncanny. Where do you even get off by connecting that flow or that scheme or whatever the case may be? Yeah. When it comes to Earl Sweatshirt, bro, I've never been able to piece together his bars until I learned the song. That man said, promise day right, I can put my fist up after I give my dick up. Quick buck. Maybe a gold chain. <laughs> I would have not done the gold chain. Where'd that come from? Like, the whole flow just... And he even said, with that fucking with the, the flow. Fucking flow. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yes, bro, with the fucking flow. Unpredictable to men, bro, because I had no clue what was happening. And in even turn. then the beat switches, like... Yeah, yeah these critics and interns. And this turns, staples, too, yes. This yeah. staples is... That's my heart. The compound syllables is obnoxious. Man. It's obnoxious, and I love it. I love it. <laughs> he said it's obnoxious. I love it. It's what inspires me as an artist for real. Oh, <laughs> like, how is this shit this crazy? Like, I, who, who, who made this nigga? Where is his mom? I just remember, like, I'm not gonna lie, I was behind on the whole Odd Future wave. Super behind. I almost slacked them with the pillow, y'all. I'm from Ohio. Yes. You're from the same place where they're from. You feel me? It was popping. I People started showing me stuff, and I just remember Tyler dropped an album. And then everybody started talking about the Earl sweatshirt, like, merch, and that he was back. And I'm like, who's back from where, bro? <laughs> like, and that was my intro to Earl sweatshirt. It's like, people like, he's finally back. Like, he dropped a project. And I don't remember what the gear was, but uh, I don't know. I think the whole story behind him and our future is more so what made me even interested before I even knew the music was dope. No facts, though, honestly. It was like, yes, sheesh. It was, it was lit. It was like, trying to figure out what was going on with them. The niggas I was with wasn't that. Yeah, like, yeah, here, like, oh, yeah, tell Kenya that they stay around the corner. Nope. <laughs> Over there, like, people talking about the TV show. Like, Lord and Squad. Yes, that was the best show. <laughs> I was telling people to stop repeating the shit in my ear. Like, bro, I get it. Funny. It was funny. Like, oh. Uh, but then once I got it, I was like, yo, these things, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Hard as hell. Period. Big ups to Tyler Creator. Big ups to Earl Swisher. Big ups to Vince Staples. Big big ups to Vince. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like when people a lot of times it's like whether they from here or not, I feel like people try to like fit into a certain mold, like try to look a certain way, try to come off a certain way. And then it just starts making them look like everyone else. So it's like, when you just be your fucking self, like how you're supposed to be, when it comes to doing, <laughs> when it comes to doing music. She said, like, how you supposed to be? <laughs> you got be your fucking self. And you go ahead and you do things the correct way, which is your way. Uh, I mean, you people will fuck with it at the end of the day because you're not being anything that's like anyone else. You're not being like inauthentic you're being yourself you're being authentic and people actually like authenticity the only reason why people think that people don't like authenticity anymore is because everyone is trying to be like everyone else because they think that's what everyone likes so i don't know why what i guess you, you kind of answered the question i have formulated in my head after what you were saying and just so you think that a lot of people are just recreating what they think sounds cool and yeah. not being themselves. Yeah, I mean, I thought that for a couple of my songs. Like, I, I would think about a sound and I would want to do it a certain type of way. And I'd be like, oh, well, let me just do it this way, so that that would happen. And it's like, these are not the songs that I came out with and none of the songs I really recorded. But I'm just saying it's been times where I would even tell myself, oh, well, they're not going to like it unless it sounds like this. And it's like, who gives a fuck? I mean, at the end of the day, this is what I want it to sound like. This is what it's coming out like. This is the art. This is the whole creativity of it all. So this is what it's going to be. This is what it is. And I feel like people will really go in and do so much. This, the, first off, this is the thing. At the end of the day, people have a lot of stuff that they have to do when it comes to being artists. They do the reels. They do, like, you know, the... The, the shits, the little music video shits on the reels Trailer. and stuff like that. Yeah, the trailers, they do all this type of stuff. They will go live every single day. You will never catch me going motherfucking live every goddamn, every single day just to just to show you guys my creative goddamn process and stuff like that, whatever, just because that's the, that's the norm. Even though I know that's what people do, like I said, that's not my process. And this is like, I can't do that just because other people are doing it. I'm not about to go live 
every single day, which I used to watch the person do to where it just seemed like it was a lot of struggle. I used to watch this person. So <laughs> it was a lot. And I don't like the struggle. I'm a Pisces. A I'm a Pisces. We're naturally lazy. So it's just kind of like when you just watch somebody just be like, I got to court this. I got to do this. And it's every day. I understand having to do it every other day, you know, a couple times of the week. But every single goddamn day, and then to tell me that it's like, you know, it's been people who told me like, well, you got to do this to make it. This is what you got to do if you were to make it. I'm like, damn, well, I guess I'm not making it. <laughs> I mean, some people will say it's what separates the people who really want it from people who do it as a hobby. Uh, at the same time, it's like partially just taking every chance you get. You feel me? Right. It's like TikTok has broken artists like. I'm not going to lie. There's been so many songs in the last three years that I've known, like, out in public and in, like, restaurants and in clubs and stuff. Yeah. That the only reason I know any of the words to this song is because I heard it on my phone oh. for the last six months. Like, I haven't been looking at this song anywhere. Yeah. But I'm saying it in public. So it's like, when people do develop and attach to that mindset, is that I can understand where it comes from. But with that, comes with knowing why you're doing it and giving yourself grace where if it becomes a like inhabit inhibitor to what your daily like process is or like what's going on in your life then maybe you should you know but if you're something you're incorporating into your actual marketing plan and scheme it's like there's someone that i see go live all the time and like she's just built it into a part of her schedule in her daily routine in her life right. once you do develop that discipline and do it on a regular it can't be beneficial but if you're doing it to the point of detriment why are you doing it that's but that's with everything that's true and that's that's what i was kind of getting at because it's kind of like the the people who like i've been around a couple of times i see the people who do it like in a healthy way and then i'll just see people who just have no type of like life outside of the phone and outside of the camera and outside of that stuff and it's just like this is just what we have to do all the time you would just go for a walk in the park with this person you'll go for a drive you'll go to the restaurant and it's like the camera would just pop out and so but that whatever it's like they're not even talking to you anymore they're talking to the phone and it's just like i feel like that i just don't understand and then they're they'll constantly ask oh well why am i in this you know i have I have writer's block. Why am I in this space? I'm not, a, I'm like, it's nothing inspiring me. I have no muses. It's like, because you're not getting off of your phone. You're continuously recording and like always just like on your phone, trying to make sure everything looks correct for your audience and you're missing everything. You're missing everything that's actually going to inspire your art because I feel like at the end of the day, I guess I am one of those people who feel like the art of the music, it seems like it's getting mixed up more with like the art of Especially after, like, with reels and stuff like that, where I feel like a lot of this shit, like, even when it comes to music videos and everything like that, I feel like reels completely just, like, murdered them. And it's, like, if the art of it all, it just seems like it's getting lost in that. I don't know exactly how to put it, but you know what I'm trying to that say. Is, that is <laughs> the whole idea of creating a project or something, like, to present to people is getting watered down. Yeah. And it's presentation by short form media. Yeah, it's like if you could have a great song, but it's like and let's say you're not a dancer and shit, but let's say you just made a great, amazing dance song, but if you don't make no motherfucking dance and these motherfucking kids on TikTok are really fucking up to, your song is trash to them. It's not gonna go anywhere. Like if you don't if you don't make the dance to the song, if you don't really have that right real. Some people make good music and stuff like that, and they're just not really like the performance type of like for this type of stuff. And I'm like, I'm one of those people. I can't really like get on my TikTok and just put it up and set it up and then just be like, I can't do that. Like, I, it's just like, it's not in me. And it's like, but, and then when people will tell me, well, that's how you're not going to make it. Then you're going to have to do stuff like that. It's just kind of like, well, how did everybody make it before us when they, before TikTok and everything? <laughs> like, how did that even happen? I know that's old age, but at the same token, it's like, it took something though. And I feel like, because it's old age, even though it took just probably the sound and just probably the look and the way that you perform, we could still take that now. The same thing that attracted people then is the same thing that could attract people now. We just have cameras and phones and stuff like that to assist. However, the same thing that worked then most definitely could work now as long as you just have the actual talent for it. And if you don't have magnetic coasters. 
<laughs> no, to a certain extent, 100%. And like I said earlier, it's just the fact that social media puts more of the power into your hands than has been in previous times. Mm. And so people feel like if I'm not utilizing it to the best of my ability, I'm wasting all my opportunity. No, for sure. And so I know me personally, I was not trying to be on TikTok. I thought it was dumb. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't trying to be on TikTok either, but I made only a couple not. of TikToks. Oh, well, <laughs> we live on TikTok right now. <laughs> I like me some TikTok. I came for it. Getting on TikTok was because someone else saw the potential in it and told me I should do it. And it started off with me trying to do what other people were doing. Uh, I, you, you see how I dance? <laughs> I mean, you know, goofy. Like, I'm not a dancer like that. Not the whole... In the steps... It wasn't long lived that I was the man doing dances. I started doing what worked for me, which was just talking. Right. I would just narrate my life to the camera and I grew on TikTok. And I was like, all right, bet. Now I'll start posting more of my music and I'll start adding my music in my videos of me talking and figuring out a way to make it work for me as opposed to looking at what other people were doing and trying to do the same. What's something that you're waiting on? But it's something you can't wait to do as an artist. Drop my first EP. Well, it's coming up, man. It's coming up. Yes. Oh. It was supposed to be for November, but it's going to be like more towards spring. I have to get out to Jamaica. So it's like when I get out to Jamaica and do what I need to do out there. What do you have to go to Jamaica for? Um, well, I have some work I have to do in Jamaica. I have a couple of music videos and stuff I have to shoot. I have a couple of people have to work with me. Who wants to work with me? So it's like, can't speak too much on it right now, but there's some stuff coming out. There's a lot of stuff coming out that I'm excited for, and it has a lot to do with my EP. It's going to be called Laurel. So when that drops, that, I feel like that's going to be the start of something really big for me because it's going to be like my favorite. It's a lot of work and effort, tears and blood and sweat put into that one. So shout out Laurel. Shout out Laurel. The street I grew up on. All right. So. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Socket Sundays. This is your boy Chuck Diesel. We are our lovely guest, Sajal. And we're saying a special thank you to our sponsors, Sake High, for providing the sake. Told you already, drink Sake High. Look them up on IG, look them up online, we'll get them ordered straight to your door. And a special shout out to God's Favorite Jewels. You know, I got my Amethyst, I got my Onyx. She got her black onyx on. I want to check them out and get your jewels. Remember, God <laughs> loves you. And Diesel does too. Peace.